In March of 2021, I turned 40, and I guess as a midlife crisis and a gift to myself, I built a cafe racer out of this 1972 Honda CB500. Now this build actually started back in May of 2020 during the height of COVID. Now, unfortunately, there were a couple things on this build I missed filming and a couple things that I wasn't able to find the footage for. So if you do have questions, make sure to ask those in the comments below. Diving into this, I've never actually taken apart anything mechanical to this level before. My last two motorcycles, well, they did come in boxes similar to this one, but it was more of just putting the fairings on as opposed to any electrical or any of the mechanical things I would have to do on a motorcycle. Now, I'm primarily a woodworker and a hobbyist one at that. So the mechanical and the fabrication end of things is all new to me in this process. And because of that, I actually struggled to share this video for a long time, mainly because the edit I knew was going to be so large and I knew I was missing a bit of footage along the way, but mainly because I don't feel I'm in any kind of position to be able to share knowledge on how to build a bike like this. Now I will say I've now built two cafe racers, so I feel I have a little bit more knowledge and I'll have other content based around these builds coming forward in the future. So like I said earlier, this is a Honda CB500 and 1971 to 1973 was the only years that the 500 was made. Otherwise, you typically find a Honda CB550 as kind of the more common motorcycle. There's a ton of resources because of this. So this is a great platform if you are looking to build your first cafe racer. Now you're going to see lots of my son throughout this video. He helped a ton on this build and actually has helped in the other cafe racer that we recently built. Now, if you haven't seen that bike, you can check out what that is over on our Instagram. One of the big motivators in doing the rebrand that we just announced last week was to be able to share different sorts of content, not just the woodworking, because by the way, we will continue with lots of that, but also experimenting with other things like motorcycle builds and well, bigger things to come. I think that's the beauty of the pivot that we're making and just our ability to share what we're interested in and what we're passionate about. So hopefully you're subscribed and along for the ride. So all you've seen us do so far is really rip off a bulk of the stuff that we didn't need on the motorcycle at this point. The idea behind a cafe racer is to build a lightweight, fast motorcycle. And this stems back to, I believe, England in the 60s, where guys would race from cafe to cafe. And bikes at that time were very limited in their power. So people spent a lot of time just ripping off as much weight as possible to make sure the motorcycles will go as fast as they possibly could. Now, I've added a bunch of modern tweaks, which if you want, I can go over in another video, but this is definitely my favorite style of motorcycle right now. So we are trying to get out the seal for the crankshifter. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is smart, but I'm going to put a screw in it. It's because what I saw someone else do and then use that to use some pliers so I can pull the seal out. No, you didn't tell me yet. Yeah, <clears throat> <coughs> it worked. Oh boy. Uh oh. Let me get you all out there. Yeah. Oh. Oh, this thing. This bike was ripped apart basically to nothing. There was barely any bolts that were not touched throughout this whole process. We took off everything we could, cleaned everything we could, painted everything we could, and replaced anything that for sure needed to be replaced because of wear. When I started shopping for the donor bike, it took a long time to find one that actually made the most sense 
based on my budget and based on the style of bike that I was looking for. And I will say this was an absolute barn find, but the one thing that it did have was a solid base to start with. I actually bought it from a guy who took the bike up to the position of getting running and then turned around and sold it. So for me, this was the perfect platform and the perfect storm of which motorcycle I should start with for this build. Did I get you? Yeah. <laughs> so if you're looking at starting a project like this, my best piece of advice for sure is to check out all of the forums on Facebook and other places and other corners of the internet where people are doing exactly what I'm doing as far as building this bike. There's a lot of tricks that I picked up along the way, like this using baking soda and vinegar to be able to prep the motorcycle parts for paint. And there was a lot of that process, so some of it I have cut out, but there was for sure 50 years of grime that I had to scrape off most of the parts on this bike. All right, so the shocks, or I guess the front forks, the paint is dry. Uh, and I'm getting them all gross because of my hands, but next up, I'm gonna put it back together. So that's the next job. Another amazing resource actually is YouTube. If you can see in the bottom left, I've got my phone running and I'm actually watching a video of someone else doing the exact same job. I will say though, the one thing that I would always recommend spending money on is the owner's manual for your motorcycle. For me, I was actually able to download a PDF version for my specific bike, but there's lots of resources that you'll find online where you can buy that user manual at a very reasonable price. Speaking of reasonable price, parts are one thing that you're gonna to need to take into consideration. And there's a ton of different resources online. Now, if you have questions about some of the places that I purchase parts from, feel free to ask those in the comments below. Or if you know of great resources, make sure you share those in the comments so the people that are trying to do these sorts of builds can benefit from that knowledge. There's lots of different schools of thought on purchasing original OEM parts and buying aftermarket parts. I actually had a combination of both. A lot of the stuff that I bought, well, was aftermarket for sure. And I'm very happy with what I bought. There were a few things that I wish I would have bought the actual manufacturer's version. Like for instance, gaskets. I had one set of gaskets that was an aftermarket, inexpensive kit, and had to rebuild the head, I think two or three times, because the gasket that I had purchased that was not an original Honda part did fail. But the things like the covers, the bolts, and really things like chains and brake pads, you can for sure get away with just using an aftermarket version of them. Real quick, we actually did a t-shirt design specifically around this build. If you're looking for a way that you can support the content that we're doing and get something in return, this is a great way you can help support us. So kind of the next steps are to remove the motor. When I get the frame out, I finally got the seat hoop. Um, so I'm gonna be cutting apart the frame to do that, but I gotta pull the motor, which means the carb has to come off, the ignition coils, uh, the pegs, and of course the motor. So we're gonna do that. I found this whole process actually quite therapeutic because things were so crazy during COVID as my profession of a mortgage broker and a lot of people really just not knowing what to do about loss of income, loss of jobs and how to make mortgage payments. This for me was just such a way to escape and learn and do something that was completely out of the wheelhouse of what I would normally do in a day. We are at the part of cutting off the frame. So what's gonna happen is I've marked back about an inch 
or exactly an inch from where my shock mount is and we're going to cut on that line using the tape and then install the seat hoop. As you can imagine, this part was actually pretty nerve wracking and Although it looked like I just slapped some tape on there, took some measurements, this probably took me about an hour just to get up the courage to make this cut. But I'm so glad I did because the reality is you can't really screw anything up too far beyond repair. Well, <laughs> in this instance, maybe. And this actually has ignited in me just the desire to learn to do more fabricating and more metal work. got the seat hoop roughly in place. I still gotta do some trimming so my buddy can help weld it. I did have to use a clamp to uh, suck it in because it was a little bit wider than uh, what uh, what it should have been. So you get what you pay for. This was a Amazon special for 20 bucks. So it worked and uh, yeah, so again, now we're gonna start cleaning up a lot of the extra pieces that we don't need, all the tabs. Um, that need to be removed. For the back of where I cut out on the bike, I'll show you in a second, there's some holes that need to be plugged. So I made these and these will be welded into place. I want a fender on the bike, but I want a little tiny one off the back. So I have marked out basically the existing fender from the bike, which I'm going to cut along this line. And this will get mounted right underneath the seat hoop. And um, I'll, put, I'll actually probably just use the existing holes uh, from the fender to do a mounting bracket. And then my license plate holder plus uh, rear uh, signal light will go right in the back of the center. So I think this will look pretty good and it's a good way to use the part that otherwise would have been going to the dump. And the reality is none of the parts for this bike other than the stuff that was garbage ended up in the dump. There's actually great resources I found in town for auto recyclers and other people that uh, resell used motorcycle parts. This is how it should look. I've been obsessing over this for two days and what I've been obsessing over is just the bulkiness of this and I don't like it. So what I want to do is I want to create a new bracket that basically is a 90 degree that comes straight off and then back down at 90 with basically a piece on the end which will hold the foot peg for the passenger. Here we go. So back with Basically my mocked up piece, which is basically gonna go like this. This part will be cut off and will be put here. Let's get welded in and we'll just do that on just a little bit of an angle so it sticks out just a hair, but it'll move the peg back a little bit. If you have any suggestions of machines that I should look at for, I guess a beginner welder, I greatly appreciate that. Now, this is me being totally honest. There's a lot of stuff along the way that I did stop filming kind of at this part. And a lot of it had to do with the fact that I just felt uncomfortable trying to share a knowledge base that I was just learning for myself. But I'll tell you, I learned so much throughout this process and I am thankful that I went through it and I'll definitely have better content on future videos. But here's some of my Instagram stories to hopefully help fill in the blanks. Yes. So yes, I have made an absolute mess. Uh, I was fighting with getting the rim off last night. I just wanted to try it or the tire off the rim, I should say. Um, but the frame is back from powder coating and I got the motor mounted by myself. It was challenging, but we got it done. And uh, I am not doing anything. I'm not doing anything in this garage till I clean up. Okay, we're still grinding, still grinding. Uh, I've done a crap job of filming today, but that's okay, but I'll show you what we've done. So, again, mess. I, I did clean up a bit in here, but uh, we got the front forks, so the steering column and everything is back together, which is awesome. Bearings are seated. Found that freezing them works really well. And then uh, the rims, I did paint these once before, but I wasn't happy with them, so going going all the way 
going all the way and repainting them. All right, still going. We got the headlight bucket on because that's where the wiring goes from all the hand controls. So I put that on as well as the front forks. We saw it earlier though. We got the rear suspension on as well. These brackets are cool. They're uh, for your turning signal. So they're mounts that go on those. So anyways, okay, motorbike, here we go. Now the bike's in a state where I have to start working on the electronics tray. So I'm going to make a cardboard template of that. And then I have some, I think it's 16 gauge steel. I don't know. Anyways, I'll cut it out of that. But first I want to do the cardboard template. And the goal is to make a small tray that'll just follow the curve of this bar on the bike. And I'll scallop it a little bit just so it follows through. This should house the battery, the Moto Gadget M unit, the what else i guess the master uh fuse majiggers and whatever else electronical that i'm forgetting because i don't know this is all new to me just exuding pure confidence <laughs> Building this bike, I had a steady stream of packages coming in the door with all the new parts that I needed. So I had lots of cardboard to be able to make these kind of templates with. So here we go. We got some laminated broken skateboard, a rev marker, and a chunk of plywood. And all I've done is traced the shape of the I guess the flow of that bar. So now I know where I want to scallop it and I can kind of curve this so the bar matches, or I'm sorry, the battery tray, the electronics tray matches the curve of the bike. And you know what they say, need a tool, make a tool. I am blown away at how well this worked and I've used this trick on other things since. And this is just such an easy way to be able to make a custom part and get it to the exact shape that you want without wasting expensive materials. One really important trick that I learned was actually to score along the fold line. This made it a lot easier and gave me a lot better fold than it would have if I just tried to do this by hand. All right, the battery box is clamped in place. Looks awesome. I destroyed the lens by the looks of it with some splatter. I've kind of punched where I want to put the holes for the mounting brackets for this, but uh, it's all bent up, welded up. She's good to go. All right, we are on to wiring and all I've done so far is run one wire basically from the ignition control thing to the coil. Uh, I need to drill holes and install the Moto Gadget M unit. That way I can start routing wires for now, just up to uh, the controls. I'm not gonna actually wire my controls yet. Uh, and some ground, because I need to ground it out or connect it to earth depending on which side of the pond you're on. Anyways, uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. And I figured out how I'm gonna melt the battery, so I'll show you that. As I said, I'm using a Moto Gadget M unit. This is an amazing Bluetooth enabled tool that acts as the fuse box and all the relays on the motorcycle. It's super compact and definitely something that I have used on other builds and for sure will use on future builds as well. There we go, to make sure I don't arc the battery out, just cover that in blue tape, but I think one of the flaws to my design is being able to get the battery in with all the other components. I guess it goes in from that end, never mind. Maybe not. hold on. There we go. It goes in from that end. I'm gonna make a strap that'll go kind of across here, hold the battery in place from moving. And it's amazing how important the wiring is on a motorcycle or really any vehicle. I will say the only major breakdowns that I've had on this motorcycle are related to faulty wiring that I did for myself. So learn from my mistakes, make sure you take your time on this part. And if you don't feel comfortable with these steps, reach out to someone that has more experience than you might. But I will say there are some amazing wiring diagrams that are 
written out and done out specifically for the Moto Gadget and other devices that are like this. If you search online, very easy to find. If you're having issues, let me know and I can point you towards ones that I've used. Now really the only two things I did not do on this build was paint the gas tank or do the leather work for the upholstery on the motorcycle seat. For sure this is something I'm going to try in the future. In fact, on the last build I did paint the motorcycle tank myself <laughs> twice and I'll be painting it a third time. So that's part of the learning process. I'm okay with that and I will try one day. Now, what's interesting is whenever I park somewhere or go to some kind of a motorcycle meetup, the one thing or the really the two things that people comment on are the motorcycle seat and of course the gas tank. So go figure. If you've been around my channel for any length of time, you know that Total Boat's one of the biggest supporters of what I'm doing. And Total Boat has a massive catalog of products. Anything from fiberglass, which you see here, to the high performance epoxies that I often use and the other finishes. Just a bit of a teaser, they actually carry carbon fiber as well. And I use that to build the seat pan for the motorcycle that we just finished. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. It is a really fun product to use and I'm excited to do more with carbon fiber in the future. The fiberglass worked great. It was really itchy, really stinky, and definitely something that I would use again. But what a difference in using the carbon fiber versus using the fiberglass. Hopefully that video about carbon fiber will be out in the next few weeks. So if you're subscribed, you'll be able to see that first. Now I will say I got a lot more confident the further on in this project I got. And the reason for that is I just kept realizing how much crossover there was between a lot of things that I've already learned in woodworking and just how well they transferred over to working on certain pieces of this motorcycle. In future builds, I'm for sure actually gonna incorporate a little bit more wood into the builds. I've seen guys do things like make the seat cowls out of walnut and other little pieces on the motorcycles out of say recycled skateboards. But I have a couple ideas for things that I've never seen anyone else do before. And no, I don't mean wooden wheels, <laughs> but definitely make sure you subscribe so you can see what the ideas are coming up have the parts to do one of them in particular. It's just a matter of finding the exact right project to be able to build these parts for. I'm not showing any of it here. However, on the next build, you're gonna see a little bit more 3D printed product going onto the motorcycle. And I figured out a couple ways to design and build 3D printed parts that otherwise I wouldn't be able to have done just because of the custom nature of the motorcycle. If one of your fears is not having the right tools to be able to do a build like this, it would actually surprise you what you can get done just with things that, I mean, typically aren't used for this kind of work. For instance, I use a lot of my woodworking tools to shape and design the seat pan and the foam for the seat. Sanding, cutting, all that stuff can be done quite easily with woodworking tools. You don't need the fancy cutters and other things that are designed specifically for upholstery. A lot of it you can get away with with a good sharp utility knife and an orbital sander. But there are a couple key tools that I would definitely suggest. If you would like to see me do a full video on those tools, leave a comment below. I'd be curious to know, number one, who's made it this far in this video, but number two, if you are curious just about some of the general tools that definitely are inexpensive, but highly recommended for this kind of work. And to clarify, I don't necessarily mean tools specifically for what you're seeing me do here, but for the whole process of building and restoring a motorcycle. This is kind of where I left it and sent certain parts off to have done professionally, like you can see here. There was parts of this build that actually got emotional for me, especially when I got to ride the bike for the first time. And even more so when I was able to actually take the bike home and ride on the roads that I used to when I was in my early 20s. 
it might sound like a cliche, but being on a motorcycle for me just makes me feel so, so free. Like I said, we have a limited edition shirt specifically on this build. You can check that out over on our website and I'll make sure to link that below. As always, I super appreciate you watching this video, especially all the way to the end. Hopefully you're subscribed. Hopefully you can hit that like button and we'll see you on the next build.